So there's a saying that if you want to go, you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Tonight we're going to go together. We're going to basically understand what it took to help these folks, this group of leaders, get to where they need to be. Uh, it's, it's really an honor to be here at Morningside College. Cleo is, without hyperbole, the best person that I know in the business world. So anytime I have the opportunity to work with Cleo, it's just a beautiful experience. One of the real weaknesses that I discovered when I started in the, the University of Houston system was preparation for the job market. And since I teach marketing, I kind of made it my own charge to better equip our students for marketing themselves because we're all salespeople in some sense. If you've ever been on a date, right, it's, it's personal selling. And it's the same way you should approach the job market. You are always selling. So the, the quote I want to start you off with is, is one of my favorite quotes from Benjamin Franklin. So there are three things that are extremely hard. Steal a diamond and knowing yourself. And I think that is especially true when you're in college because you're just overwhelmed with information and you're trying to take in everything from your discipline, your electives, your personal life. And it's really difficult to be intentional about getting to know more about yourself. So sometimes what happens and what happened to me in my own life is that we become fixated on this path that we feel like we should be on and at some point, you can feel stuck in that path. Th this idea that I started with, that I felt stuck in IT, it was something that um, I had built up and my parents kind of pushed me toward pursuing a, an IT career because they had some uh, decent paying jobs and it was, it was what I already had some competencies in. What I realized when I was at Walt Disney World was there was a, a whole different world of career paths out there. And it was a really eye-opening experience for me because I got to work with all the theme parks, I got to work with Disney weddings and these groups that, and Disney known for their, their sales and marketing. So it really ignited a new passion in me. And what I found was that, and what I would have considered strengths, computer programming, that's not a strength, right? A strength is something you can probably apply to any job that you're ever going to work in. So I started to think about uh, being more deliberate in trying to kind of tip the balance of my career toward the activities I enjoyed doing versus the ones that I dreaded. Because I was just, uh, I loved the front end of an IT project. The ideation, you know, coming up with the new idea, you know, kind of specking it out, building maybe the, the prototype. But then there's a year of debugging, validation, verification, all these tasks that I absolutely dreaded. So I mentioned the journal or diary, uh, something, what's really important about this, if you're going to track on your phone, this is something that energized me, this is something that drained me, be very specific about what that task looked like and do it in the moment or as close to the moment as you possibly can because you'll be able to add a lot of rich details. And I think that if you're working in a job, taking classes, uh, whatever situation you're in right now, playing soccer, whatever it is, you start making a list, you're going to have awesome answers when you go to job interviews when they ask you questions like, what are your strengths? You're going to be very descriptive and you'll find that most people, college graduates, go into job interviews and they say, I'm a numbers person, right? I'm good with people. They give very bland answers. But if you get very descriptive about your strengths and they can tell that you've cultivated this and put thought into it and you're very deliberate in your answer, then you're just going to stand out uh, uh, amongst the crowd. So, so be very, uh, d very intentional about keeping uh, details regarding your strengths and how you've applied them at, at school and in your work life. Well, welcome everybody and thank you for the, the, the kind intro. Um, I'm going to talk to you tonight about knowing your audience. And, um, but first off, a little bit about me. I uh, uh, was a farm kid. I grew up in Osage, Iowa, uh, northeast Iowa. And oldest of six kids. And um, when I was growing up, I decided um, I, I liked mystery stories. Nancy Drew was a fan of mine and because she figured things out. And I, I kind of equated that to being a lawyer. And so from the fourth grade on, I decided that, that's, that's kind of what I, I want to do. So as an attorney, my measure of success is how well can I get people to talk to me? Um, and so I frequently do have to figure out who my audience is. And, and frankly, 
anybody in this room has an audience, whether it's in your job in sales, whether it's your job in IT, um, you're, you're constantly um, dealing with an audience. And it might be the customer that you're selling to. Um, it might be um, your audience as an IT person. Um, it, you know, it, when I call the help desk for IT, <laughs> not everybody can explain to me what is going on with my computer. And so those are the kinds of things that that you're going to be presented with in not only interviews, um, but also the real um, world experiences. But let me give you an example um, uh, of a, a story of a, a gal that um, was a colleague of mine uh, back in the day. And so she, she was a bright student, bright accounting student, um, had a great resume. Uh, she went into um, an interview at one of the big accounting firms in Des Moines and um, got home, felt good about it. A week later, she gets a flush letter. And they say, thanks, but no thanks. We, didn't, we aren't interested. And she, and she was crushed because she had this fantastic resume. She had great experience. And so she called uh, the person up and said, oh, why didn't I get this job? And the person said um, that interviewed her said, well, yeah, your resume was good, but um, you giggled the whole time in the interview. And I, I will say that my, my friend did have this sort of nervous laughter that, that when she responded, she did kind of have this, this giggle to her. And she said, um, and so they said, well, you know, when you giggled, it made us feel like you just weren't serious about this job. But kind of the point of the story is, um, uh, number one, under, understand your audience and how they're judging you. And, and maybe somebody her, her own age, her own um, generation, would not have seen those things that this interviewer did um, when, they, um, when they interviewed her. My name is James Herring, uh, based in Dallas, Texas. Uh, I was actually born in Wichita, Kansas. Uh, my dad worked for Procter & Gamble. We moved around in every single small town in the middle of America till we landed in, in Lubbock. Grew up there, uh, went to Texas Tech University, actually got a degree in advertising and, and wanted to kind of pursue my dreams of, of working in an ad agency. Um, but that was just a brief 32 years ago. And guess what? A lot has changed in the world of marketing and communications. Uh, so the first thing I wanted to talk about, you know, at the Richards Group, here's our really amazing building that our founder, Stan Richards, designed and built. Again, based in Dallas, Texas, we have the good fortune to work with a lot of really incredible companies. Brands like The Home Depot or Ram Trucks, uh, Dr. Pepper and Snapple. A brand is actually a promise. It is a promise made by an organization to a customer group that says, we are going to do this. We're going to stand for this. We're going to provide this. We're going to serve you in this way. That is the promise that they set forth. So how do you might perhaps start to think about it for your own individual self? Well, let's unpack that for a little bit. You know, ask yourself, what is it that you're going to promise? when you land that first job. It's not a question of getting the interview and getting the job, but what the heck are you going to do once you actually start to perform that job? What is the unique aspect about you that you can offer as a value proposition? I'm not talking about skills or talents or education or whatever. What's inside you that you're going to bring to the table? Are you going to outwork, outsmart, out hustle? What is it that you're going to do? What's that one word or phrase that you can think of that best describes you? And you can actually do your own proprietary research. You can talk to your friends and family and ask them a simple question. You know, when you think about me, what's the one thing that comes to mind? Just ask them that question. You'd be amazed at what you'll get back in terms of feedback. Ask your friends. Could be some interesting feedback that you get, right? Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about your digital presence because it profoundly impacts your personal brand. Raise your hand if you've been told you need to take a look at your social media presence and maybe clean it up. Nobody? Come on. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I can't tell you how critically important it is for you to really consciously do this. And I'll tell you why. We will find a 
fabulous candidate. And by the way, at the Richards Group, we receive on average every single day between 150 and 200 resumes. I said every single day. There's only 741 positions in the whole company. So think about that. What is the one thing we, we look at the resume, we look at the really well-written cover letter, great experience, excellent academic performance. The very first thing we do, we check and check and check because it is a amazing reflection of who you are and what you've done within the digital landscape, especially your social media profiles. And let me tell you, the fastest way to get taken out of contention is you know, getting that thumbs up or thumbs down are some questionable stuff that's in your digital past. Mother Teresa, you look at Gandhi, be an example of the change you'd like to see in the world, and of course Martin Luther King, wouldn't we all agree to have purpose? I think we all would. Nelson Mandela, Harriet Tubman, Abraham Lincoln, would you say that they were purpose-driven? I think we would say yes. What does the dictionary tell us about purpose? The reason for which something is done or created or from which something exists. I like this one. What is purpose? Mark Twain. The two most important days in your life are the day you are born and the day you find out why. You're here to create the definition in your purpose of who you are, why you're here, and what you're going to do.